Hey YouTube, welcome to One Little Coder. Today we are going to talk about what to do during the times of layoffs if you are a data scientist. Let us say you are a data scientist just like me. Then what are the things that you can do during the times of layoffs or during the times of recession? As we see these days, there is layoffs happening everywhere. Some day or other you have to face it. So what I have thought of doing in this particular video is share some of my experience and learning and say, you know, what are the things that you can do? And in general, like how do you deal with layoffs, especially if you are a data scientist, let's understand why companies are laying off. If you see this, you can see year on year, Google employees have grown. You would see the same chart for Microsoft, similar chart for Facebook, a lot of companies. But what has happened is due to COVID, and everything else like inflation and everything else happened after that growth has not been the same, especially the companies that grew a lot during COVID are not growing at the same pace. Like you can, you can in fact, like see that companies that grew a lot are not growing either their growth has dropped or it is flat line. But what companies have done is thanks to some forecasting or, a, you know, a staff planning team that they decided that they wanted more number of employees chasing the trend, but the trend is not valid anymore. So now to cut cost place where they can cut cost is human resources because human resources are mostly expensive, especially if you think from a knowledge worker perspective, human resources are expensive. So they want to cut or shut down teams so that they can save cost. And that's one of the reason the companies in fact give severance package for next three months, let go resources because they know that even if you pay only three months salary, you don't need that person for rest of the time. So this is, this is the time that we are on. So what do we learn? Layoffs are primarily happening because companies have massively hired people more than what they want and they are offloading them. Point one, point two, the business is actually doing very bad. So they have no other way. They have to lay off their existing employees. Point three, maybe really the macroeconomic factor has affected them. Let's just say you are Zoom. You must have thought that this pandemic is not going to end. Everybody is going to be on Zoom calls, but that's not the reality today. So you have to cut workforce. Point number four, company was doing already bad and they just needed a scapegoat. So now this is the scapegoat. Everybody can blame it on macroeconomic trends. Um, financial situation in the world and say, you know what, I'm letting go people because I don't have, this is another thing, right? Uh, you can lay off anybody, but you don't know the entire reason. So just throw any reason for the PR and then just fire people, make a beautiful LinkedIn post. People would appreciate that you are somebody who takes ownership. It's about an employee, create an email ID, whatever it is. Now that we know why layoffs are happening, what can we do about layoffs? Before we know, we before we talk about what can we do about layoffs, I would like to talk to you about two kinds of roles, like at least in the way I see it is in tech. This is particularly in tech. I'm not talking about sales and marketing. One is a KTLO role. What is a KTLO role? KTLO in mostly in software development means keep the lights on KTLO, keep the lights on, which means Somebody has to do something to keep the lights on. And if that somebody does not exist, then you cannot keep the lights on. Lights will be off. That means business is not going to function as it is supposed to function. For example, let us take customer support as an example. You are a company who has, let's say 10 customers and on an average, these 10 customers raise, let's say two tickets in a week. So you have got 20 tickets in a week. And let us say you need 20 support engineers for this 20 tickets. Now, if you suddenly decide to fire five of these engineers, then the remaining five tickets will be in the backlog and your customer is going to be upset. In a time where already economy is tanking or the financial situation is not good in the market, you definitely don't want to disappoint the customer. So what a company would do is they would make sure that this 20 employees are not ever fired because they are in a KTLO role and they have to keep the lights on by doing what they do. The other type of role, which I call a luxury role um, and or you know, in, in market market, they call it a growth role, but I'm going to call it a luxury role. 
and for me at least in my opinion like if i run a company a data science team is a luxury role unless you are into risk analytics where you are trying to predict fraud where you are essential for you know something to move forward most data science teams are a luxury role they are a cost arbitrage or you know prevent expenses type of a team you run a marketing campaign um you want to reduce cost you want to target more people you want to improve ctr this is the kind of key business metrics most marketing data science teams would be working on or you take another team for an example like if you are from a bfsi banking financial services and insurance background most of the time you are trying to convert a lead into an account or probably you are trying to find how to cross sell how to upsell how to increase the average order value how to increase the customer lifetime value in all these things if you see none of this is ktlo none of this is required for the business to function it is not like if this data science team do not exist tomorrow the business is going to crumble down it's not going to happen so now you have ktlo then you have got luxury you like it or not data science is a function that is a luxury function it's not something you and i decided we ended up being in this role so this is the fact given that this is the fact now what can you do as a data scientist during layoffs where companies are keen on reducing cost the first thing i think upskilling is one of the most important thing that we do not discuss often what do i mean by upskilling i'm not asking you to go around and learn everything that you could but it is the time where you need to have something unique where you need to make sure that you have something like do not believe in your current job so i would say that if you are writing a case statement your uh, default should be that you are going to get fired i i i think the positive way to approach this is by default you should be very clear that you are going to get fired and you just need to create a flow diagram if you get fired what are the things that you can do so for that i'm saying upskilling is quite important if you want to upskill in today's world i would say there are certain ways you can go as a data scientist one you can purely enter into the ml ops side which is which is again quite being discussed these days um and you need to remember one thing um you a company can have like five data scientists but you don't need five ml ops engineers you might need only one because you want to take care of the um, deployment and pipeline so again the path that you are going to take is also going to be uh, you need to see how crowded that space is what is the density of engineers or you know data scientists or human beings available in the site but nevertheless one is you can upskill into a particular direction you can get into a specialization and you can upskill yourself point one very 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 important for you to upskill at this moment if you are somebody who has a title data scientist and then all you do is create a bunch of powerpoint presentation i i i will be worried if i am that person because um that that is a difficult way to sell your role if you are um, if you are in a, if you are going to give an interview maybe that is a time you need to realize what profile it is and that comes to the second point that you need to have a very clear concise way of describing what you do in general terms it's called an elevator pitch if you are in an elevator with somebody you get like 30 seconds or 20 seconds to explain what you do so you need to have that so that elevator pitch is something that you should be always ready the first thing that i said is upskilling the second thing is having a very clear idea of what is that you can deliver what is that you have been delivering and what are you the second thing. third thing is i think this is the best time to cut your own expense as well you are a data scientist you have been doing analysis modeling everything for the company that you work for but i think this is the best time to implement that data science principle for your life do an experimentation if i do this thing for example you have got a some subscription um if i have it or i do not have it compare to cohorts or for example you wanted to buy um, a very good um, let's say something expensive is it mandatory at this point will can it wait for next 2 3 months how much runway that i've got in bank Keep, calculate all these things so cut your own expense the fourth thing is 
I think this is the best time, like in my opinion, this is the best time to launch a product that is based on data science. I think hands down, this is the best time to launch your own product based on data science. And what do I mean by that? I think what I'm specifically meaning here is micro SaaS. If you are somebody who can code, data scientists who are more like analytics consultants, but they cannot code, irrespective of what you are, I think this is the best time to be part of a community called Indie Hackers. I would strongly encourage you to go visit the website IndieHackers.com, listen to some of the podcasts. There is a podcast with Lin Tai that is something that I listen very frequently. It has a lot of things that you can reflect upon on your own life. I would strongly encourage you to watch or listen to the podcast and then go read the post on Indie Hackers community. I think this is the best time to be an Indie Hacker and launch your own micro SaaS. You might be asking me, hey, why are you not doing it? You know, everybody prioritizes something. I've prioritized to make a video. I've not prioritized to build a product. But yeah, maybe maybe in the future I might regret. But for now, I would strongly encourage you to either build the product or be part of somebody who is building the product. Indie hackers are very lean. They are not going to increase the expense. They are not mostly looking for VC funding. They are bootstrapping, most likely. And they are always on point for profitability. So either it is a micro SaaS or it's a, it's a non-time product. Um, it's 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 very important to uh, for you to for you to actually go do something and then see if you can make some money out of it. So that's the next thing is other than indie hacking, um, always try to see if you can have some kind of brand building or a, or a sidekick. When I say brand building, I don't I don't want you to um, share motivational messages every day on LinkedIn. Uh, these are cringe. I just absolutely hate it as well. Um, whether it is doing threads on Twitter, or whether it is sending motivational messages on LinkedIn, or trying to brag what you have done in your life, which nobody can do. I'm not asking you to do these things. What I'm asking you to do is be useful for others. Be, be the one that somebody would respect. To the level that tomorrow, for example, there is an opening in their company, they would know that this is the person I want to reach out at the first and then say, you know what, you have been sharing a lot of pandas related tutorial. Um, maybe uh, would you be interested in looking for this opportunity? And I, I can assure you that this happens all the time. People always reach out. They're very kind. They want to help somebody. And this is this is, this is is one of the things that you should be doing. So to quickly summarize what we have discussed, we have discussed about how we have discussed to upscale especially when I said upskill, upskill in a particular direction, either go in the data engineering side, go in the ML ops side, go in the data visualization side, go in the machine learning side, or go in um, any other side, like generative AI, AI, um, either building applications on AI, go in one particular direction. Um, at this point, as I think as a data scientist, you have very good understanding about a lot of things like business context. So it's very important for you to go in a particular direction and then make use of that side and then you know be good at it. Cut your expense, try to build your own product, be an indie hacker, try some kind of side income, a side gig. Um, and most importantly, um, be the person um, whom somebody would reach out to. Don't be cringe, don't be disrespectful. Um, I can say don't be Elon Musk. Um, like be, be respectful, be polite. And this is quite important on social media, especially um, I'm not just saying for you to artificially create that image, but I think it's 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 a good thing to be a good person, being helpful, being useful for others so that they will have that image on you and then they'll reach out to you. So overall, uh, it's partly human traits, like what you have to do, partly financial and partly educational, like what you want to do for your profession. And um, I think that's 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 all you can do. Um, and recently I was telling somebody that if you see success in life, I would say success is um, is a fraction like it's it's if you see success equals in the numerator, you have got luck and the denominator you have got, let's say X or number of chances. My philosophy is that if you want to be successful, you need to be lucky. There is no other way. You need to be in the right time at the right place, um, the right moment 
somebody it's 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 quite obvious like after a decade of tech experience i can say luck is one of the most important factors for your career progression can you predict luck no can you say this is how i'm going to get lucky no but what you can influence is you can influence the denominator you can maximize your chances of getting lucky by increasing your denominator which means trying out a lot of things trying out a lot of things for example if you take fishing as an example you are not going to fish in only one place where you can catch only one fish and then just sit and pray every day that you are going to catch that fish that's not how it's supposed to work you throw a larger net you fish everywhere and then you hope that you are going to get a big fish you might get a big fish you might get a lot of small fishes you might not get a fish at all but you are maximizing your chance and that is exactly what i mean that if you want to be successful you need to be lucky and you cannot predict to be lucky but what you can do is you can influence the denominator and increases the chances of becoming lucky and i want you to be lucky this can happen to anybody like i said your default belief should be like i'm going to get probably fired and the economic situation is not good and as a data scientist this is what i'm going to do and i'm going to start acting today and that is going to probably prepare you for the next 2 3 years of low tech hiring hiring freeze um, bad tech whatever you would like to call it but i think this will prepare you and like this is also like a self advice this will also help us be in a position where uh, we have a disadvantage of not being in a ktlo role but we can take our skills we can take everything that we have in hand and then try to be resilient that's that's what i wanted to share with you like if you have any questions and comments let me know in the comment section otherwise i hope you and your family stay safe take care